Welcome to Guerrilla Discipleship. My name is Kevin Baker. I'm your host. Welcome back this week. I'm glad that you're here. And um, as we begin today, I want to share with you a passage of Scripture, just one verse uh, out of 1 Corinthians. Paul, writing to the church in, uh, in Corinth, said this at the end, uh, the very last verse of chapter 15 uh, of his first letter. He says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. But listen to this. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You know, there is an issue that I think we all see about ourselves and we see in the church today that's hindering the progress of the kingdom of God, or it's hindering the progress of of disciple-making in our lives and growth in our lives and disciple-making in the world. And that is that we read a lot, think a lot, hear a lot, talk a lot, but do so little. Why is it that we know so much about God's word and yet our action seems at times to be so minimal compared to what we know? The, Jesus himself talked about this principle. He said, it, it's not good enough to just know the word. That's like a man who builds his house on sand, but we must be people who obey the word, who do who put into practice what God is teaching us, then our house, then our lives will be built on the rock. I know in my own, in my own life, just to be honest with you, it's easy to study and it's easy to have conversations. I, I can spend all of my time trying to get others engaged in being spiritually obvious without being obnoxious and yet fail myself to be talking to people praying and and going out among lost people. And so we have to constantly work in our own hearts and in our own lives. Regardless of what fellowship you're a part of, whether you're a part of Oakdale Church, whether you are have your uh, you're part of another church, whether you are in a small group, the question that I want to press on all of us today is what are we doing? How many people are we speaking to on a regular basis? I know we're all busy. Busyness is not an excuse. Busyness means that we're putting other things above what God has invited us to do for him. We prioritized our lives so that God gets what time we have left over rather than giving God our time and trusting that our lives will flow out of that. And so you and I have to confront this, and and I'm asking something. I want to just invite you, uh, as I'm inviting myself today, to be active in doing, to be the kind of people who don't just talk about, learn about, uh, believe, and, and, and understand, but that we are the people who are, as the Apostle Paul said, always giving ourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because our work for the Lord, our labor in the Lord does not ever uh, be, in, it's never in vain. It always produces a fruit, a crop of some kind, because that's who God is, and that's how he has planned it. And so I'm, uh, I'm encouraging you, if you're a part of a small group or in whatever connections you have with other followers of Jesus, would you begin today, this, this week, to say, hey, let's hold each other accountable on, on a few things. Let's, let's make sure that when we read God's word, that we've got an action step of obedience. And let's share it with one another. You know, we could text each other, right? If you're in a small group, you could just say, hey, here's what God is saying to me this week that I need to to work on or that I need to follow him and obey in in my life. Let's begin to get that practice. Wouldn't it be great if, if 20 of us, I don't know how many, doesn't matter how many of us, but if even two of us said, listen, I want to begin to practice what God is showing me in his word. I'll never be the person that I want to be. I'll never experience the life of freedom and peace until I put into practice and begin to obey all that I'm learning. So I want to ask you to develop an accountability partnership with someone. This could be one other person. This could be uh, your small group. You know, as a part of of Wesley's uh, movement of disciple-making back in John and Charles Wesley's day, There was accountability all over the Methodist movement. Now, I'm a United Methodist pastor, and I can tell you that today, all of that accountability has left us. We're 
we are holding each other accountable on very little, uh, and that's part of, I think, why we've gotten into the situation that we're in. Accountability is not a negative thing. Accountability is not coming before someone uh, and, and saying, oh, I've failed, or, or it, that's not what we mean by accountability. Accountability is that loving desire to share what's happening in my life with you so that you and I can grow together. You don't hold me accountable by condemning me or shaming me because I didn't do what I said I was going to do. You're constantly, accountability is the constant encouragement. I remember years and years ago, a, a friend of mine uh, and I decided we were going to work out together. And, and there, you know this, there were days I didn't want to go to the gym, but I knew my friend would be there waiting for me. And I knew he would be disappointed if I wasn't there. And so I got up on days that I would have probably stayed in bed if no one was holding me accountable. If there was no partnership in this, I would have, have stayed home far more than I did. I was always glad when I went. We always enjoyed our time together. We prayed together. We, we uh, grew in our, our ability to lift weights together and, and try to get physically fit. We had fun. I have fond memories of that season in my life. That's what accountability is. It's showing up and partnering with others that, that are going to help us to show up to do it. So if you're going to begin to prayer walk, don't do it alone. Prayer walk with someone. Make a commitment. Hey, let's prayer walk every Thursday, or let's get together and pray for our families every Thursday, or let's begin to, to hold each other accountable about uh, just asking each other, hey, how many people have you prayed for this week, or how many times did you uh, pray for your waitresses, or whatever it is? How's your prayer calendaring going? By the way, let me just share with you. I have been lousy at my prayer calendar probably for the last month. And, I, I, and no one's holding me accountable because the truth is even Michelle doesn't know what I'm doing in my own prayer calendar. And so I, uh, I realize that it is so easy to get off base. It's so easy to allow the cares and worries of the world to crouch and, and encroach. It's a, been a busy season getting ready for Easter and there's so much going on in our particular fellowship here, that I have allowed it to crowd out my commitment to praying for people who I care about that I want God to bless every day. So would you begin to join with me that we might allow God to bring accountable disciple-making into our lives? That means, remember the seven elements of a disciple-making movement, right? We we want to be focused on God's word, and we focus on God's word by reading it, obeying it, and sharing it. And so bring somebody else into your devotional time. One other person, you can do it online, you can do it uh, through text, calling, whatever. You don't have to read the word together, but bring someone in that you at least once a week say, I'm going to check in with you about what I'm doing in obedience to what I'm reading. And then multiply extraordinary prayer. Let's talk to one another about how can we pray better together or hold each other accountable. And then we want to uh, cast vision to believers. When was the last time that you talked to other believers about what it means to be a disciple maker? Let's talk about that with someone else. Hold each other accountable. At least once a month, we're going to cast vision with one other follower of Jesus about what you and I are learning and practicing about disciple making. Then we want to train up believers. We, we need to help other believers feel ready. What a great way to do that through accountability and encouragement. Like, here's what I'm doing. Would you join me in it? Isn't that amazing? Just join me in it. And then we need to go out. We, boy, it, we can make every excuse in the world for not going and being spiritually obvious in the world around us. But every one of us has an oikos, a people group, a, a group that we share. I was this morning privileged to go and, and be a part of uh, my uh, grandson's soccer uh, practice. And, and, you know, there's an oikos right there. And I noticed that my, my uh, son, daughter and son-in-law know some of the people with the, their kids uh, at their kids' soccer practice. So you're beginning to be around people with a common goal, a, a common experience of of two-year-old soccer practice, which is a fun thing to do. But let's practice and prepare about how to be spiritually obvious there, or maybe what to say, or maybe just an invitation to lunch. Hey, let's, uh, let's next week after practice, let's bring a, a picnic and just the kids can play in the playground 
And what we can do then is, um, if nothing else, just open with prayer. Hey, before we eat, could we pray for this meal? That begins to open the conversation with people that you may not know that well, that you're a spiritual person, that you pray. Who knows how that conversation might go? Again, we want this to flow organically, but somebody has to take a step. Someone, one of us, all of us have to begin to do what we are learning about. I so appreciate that some of you are pretty regular uh, here at, uh, at Guerrilla Discipleship, but what are you doing with the information that you're gathering? What are we doing to practice this on a day-to-day basis? Let's not get weary in doing good. The Bible encourages us not to be weary. Let's always give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. That doesn't mean that we don't have other lives. It just means that whatever we're doing as we're getting our tires replaced on our car, we're aware that we have disciple-making opportunities. As we're going to our kids' practice, as we're going on vacations, as we go out to eat, as we're interacting with family, they're all opportunities for us to continue to give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord, to being spiritually obvious, but never obnoxious. Listen, the world needs those of us who God has called, anointed, blessed, who know the forgiveness of God. The world needs us to begin to speak up, to make ourselves known, to be signposts you know, the world is, is confusing and getting more confusing every day. And God has inviting, uh, invited us to be spiritual signposts along the road of other people's lives. A signpost that just says something like this. There's help here. There's hope here. There's love here. There's encouragement here. Whatever it is, let's be those people that allow God to use us to begin spiritual conversations with people that might be eventually interested in discovering more. We never know where God is at work, but God is at work right now in the hearts of people that you know and love. He's at work in your life and in my life, but he's at work around us, and he's inviting us to be on guard, to be looking for those opportunities. So I'm pleading with us today, one step of obedience this week would be this. Get an accountability partner for your disciple-making. Invite someone in to talk with you about your own prayer calendaring or or about your own going out and praying in the neighborhoods or whatever it might be. Get someone else on your team so that we can hold one another accountable, but not in a uh, condemning or, or condescending way, but in an encouraging and, man, I showed up because I remembered you were counting on me kind of way. There's no end to what God will do as we are faithfully obedient to him. There's no end to the change of lives that we're going to see as we give our lives to God to be used in service to him. Thank you so much for being a part of Guerrilla Discipleship. Thank you so much for your willingness to not just listen and and be hearers of the word only, but to be doers of the word. I look forward to to hearing more from you. Again, as always, if you have questions, requests, information, uh, you can email me, kbaker at oakdale.church. I thank you for those who sometimes see me and and tell me about uh, listening. It's an encouragement to me, and we want to do this together. Share this message with others if you feel like that would be helpful. Uh, But really, I'm, I'm looking for all of us to take a step of obedience this week. May God bless you, and we'll see you next week.